All right, everybody, we're going to bring the Standing Committee of Human Resources to order. Uh, my name is Brendan McGuire. I'm the chair of the committee. Um, and we'll start by um, uh, let's do a roll call here and get everybody to introduce themselves. We'll start with the NDP caucus. Claudia Chender uh, and MLA for Dartmouth South here. Kendra Coombs, Cape Breton Center. Larry Harrison, Colchester, Muscat, Auburn Valley. Brad John, Sackville, Beaverbank. Rafa Di Costanzo, MLA Clayton Park West. Bill Horn, Waverly Fall River, Beaverbank, MLA. Suzanne Lonis Croft, Lunaberg, and Vice Chair. And, and any staff that's on the phone call, please? And the chair, of course. Uh, any staff that's on the call, please? Joanne Hunter, Peter Hill. Deputy Chief Here. of Staff, NDP Caucus. Peter Harrison, PC Caucus. Okay, and I'm Brendan McGuire, Hi. MLA for Semantic, and I am the chair of the committee. Um, just a couple of reminders here. Um, when you're not speaking, um, please put your phone on mute. Um, it can be difficult to hear. Um, today, we are going to consider appointments for agency boards and commissions. Um, and, you know, just to keep things rolling smoothly, let's try to only respond um, once your once your name called. So uh, with that, we will uh, start with the agency boards and commission appointments. Bill Horn here. I uh, nominate for the Department of Business Development Nova Scotia Limited Board of Directors. I uh, put forth Michael Roberts as a director. Mr. Chair. Any Brad. questions? Mr. Yeah, Mr. Chair, Brad Johns. Yeah. Go ahead. Thank you. Um, so, Mr. Chair, I'm, I'm noting that uh, Mr. Roberts has already served two terms on the board, and I do see uh, that, the, uh, that they're requesting that he do a third term based on what they feel is strong uh, knowledge of rural broadband. Um, I'm concerned over the fact that, uh, I guess, a couple of things. One being is that, uh, you know, the terms of reference says that it should be a two, uh, two-term two position. And uh, I'm sure that there's other people throughout the province who would have uh, as good, if not better, understanding in regards to uh, rural broadband, um, you know, and that this is becoming uh, potentially precedent-setting by doing this. So... I'm, you know, I have no issues with uh, the individual, but I do have issues with uh, looking at uh, extending the term. And I'm curious to, uh, you know, why, why they can't go out and find somebody else that has the same qualifications and uh, still uphold the terms of reference for the for DNS. 
duly noted. Um, any other questions? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Nay. Brad Jones. Uh, next. Next, uh, uh, I also nominate for the Halifax Convention Center Board of Directors, Events East, uh, Barbara Manning as a member, James Jamie McNeil as a member, Justin McDonough as a member, Wayne Crawley as a member. Any questions? Mr. Chair, Brad Johns. Mr. Johns. Thank you, Mr. Chair. So, Mr. Chair, I uh, I uh, know uh, uh, Mr. McDonough and um, Mr. Crawley, and they're both uh, very upstanding and, and uh, nice people. I know them per both personally. In fact, when I served on uh, the board for uh, Health Act Convention Center uh, some 15 years ago, uh, both of those individuals were there at that time. Justin was the chair, and uh, Mr. Crawley and I actually sat on a human resources uh, subcommittee, which hired Scott Ferguson um, to replace Fred McGilvery. So that was a good while ago, 15 years ago. So I'm curious to know, you know, what the uh, terms are uh, for those two gentlemen. Have they been there for 15 years on that committee? And, uh, you know, and if not, why is it that uh, that Health Act Convention Center seems to be recycling board members? Now, once again, it's nothing against either of those individuals. I know them both and they're very uh, smart and, and upstanding individuals. But I am concerned once again about the process in this case, too. Does anybody have any uh, answers on that? Uh, we can look into it, and, and it's noted. Uh, well, Mr. Thank you, Mr. Chair. So, so, we, so I'm, I'm hold on one second, Mr. Jones. We wouldn't have those answers specifically. We yes. can uh, reach out to uh, that board. We can see uh, what the terms of reference are, and we can ask for a response. But uh, nobody right now would have those that that answer. I don't think. Does the clerk have the answer? No, I don't. Right. So, so Mr. So, Chair. In, yes. in, uh, due to the fact that we don't have a current answer on that, um, I'd like to put a motion forward that we defer uh, those two uh, recommendations until our, uh, until our next meeting and we can get an answer on that. So I would move that we defer Justin McDonough and Wayne Crawley until our next meeting. All those in favor? Aye. All those opposed? Nay. 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 Motion defeated. Okay, so um, the the nominations are on the committees are on the uh, floor. Uh, we'll put it up for vote unless there's any more questions. All those in favor? <laughs> Mr. Chair. Aye. Mr. Aye. John. Thank you, Aye. Mr. Chair. So, so. Although, uh, so we've just voted not to defer those two appointments. So the the motion we'll be voting on will be all four of them then? Yep. Correct. Okay, thank you. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? Nay. Nay. Motion is carried. Next. Department, Suzanne Lonis Croft. Um, Department of Energy and Mines, Canada and Nova Scotia Offshore Petroleum Board, James G. McDonald is a member. Any questions? All those uh, for? Aye. Yeah. Aye. Aye. All those against? Motion is carried. Next. This is Rafa Di Costanzo, and it's. Uh, um, um, during the Department of Health and Wellness, the Board of Nova Scotia College of Medical Laboratory Technologists. We have three names. Doreen Campbell as member, Melinda Day as member, and Philip Pino as member. Pino, so Pino. Any questions? 
All those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? Motion is carried. Any other? Yes. Uh, Rafa again. The Department of Labor and Advanced Education, the Occupation Health and Safety Advisory Council. Uh, we have Ernie Dalton as member employee representative. Jerry Aguinaga as a member employee representative and designate as employer co-chair. Stephanie Tawacha as a member and uh, employ employer representative. And Jesse Rissa, member employer, employer representative as well. And that's it, there's four names. Any questions? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, Opposed? Motion is carried. Uh, anything else? Yes, I have one more. Uh, there, under there the are two young men who I'm sorry? Oh, sorry, I thought I was on mute, sorry. Okay. Sorry, uh, this is Rafa de Costanza again, and under Labor and Advanced Education, we have one more. Uh, it is the Workers' Compensation Board, and I have two names. Uh, Rick Clark as a member worker representative, and Janet Hazelton as a member worker representative. Do you have any questions? Mr. Chair. Mr. Johns. Uh, yes, thank you. So. Um, I just wanted to note in regards to uh, uh, Ms. McMullen. Uh, no, I'm sorry. It's the next one. Sorry, Mr. Chair. So this is Workman's Compensation Board? Correct. No issues. Thank you. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion is carried. Next. Suzanne Lonis Croft. Department of Transportation Infrastructure and Renewal, Halifax Dartmouth Bridge Commission, Janet McMillan, Vice Chair and Member. Mr. Johns, do you have a question? Yes, I do. Thank you, Mr. Chair. So I just it I'm just curious as to uh why um I noticed that that we are uh, in doing this we are revoking the, uh, Ms. McMillan's appointment as a member and reappointing her as Vice Chair. And my question, I guess, is that that doesn't take care of the vacancy that's still there. Um, with 10 applicants, um, I, I don't understand why we're doing this and we're not appointing to fill the, the vacancy that exists. Does anybody know that? Sounds like uh, the clerk, would you have the answer to that? No, I don't know, but if the committee wants me to, I can write to the minister. Well, we can write. We can write and figure out why some are, you know, uh, some dispositions are being filled. Thank you, Mr. Chair. No problem. Um, any other questions? All those in favor? Aye. 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 All those Aye. Opposed? Motion is carried. Next. That's it. Okay, so just give me one question here. We do have some correspondence. Um, so for other committee businesses, uh, we have correspondence from the Minister of Finance and Treasury Board in response to questions raised at the May 26th meeting. Um, is there any response, discussion on this? First of all, did everybody receive it? Yes. 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 And we we want to open up the floor to some discussion on this, or are we good? Uh, Mr. Chair. Mr. Johns. Thank you. I would uh, just move that we send an email to uh, Minister and thank her for her response. I have no other questions in regards to the correspondence. Uh, yeah, we could do that. The clerk, can you note that? I will do so. Okay. The second piece of correspondence that we received was from the Minister of Health and Wellness in response to questions raised at the May 26th meeting. Um, anyone else? Uh, is there any discussion on that? For the, for the did it, first of all, everybody received it, right? Yes. 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 Uh, any discussion? Mr. Chair Brad Johns. 
Yep. Uh, yeah, I would uh, I would like the record to reflect that uh, the PC caucus uh, does feel that it would be beneficial to have cross appointments between those two boards. Um, you know, if if those cross appointments were in place, their IWK may not have ended up into some of the issues that they ended up in. And uh, there are other uh, benefits as well. So I would like the record to note that uh, we feel that. Um, I would move a motion that we also send an email to Minister Delory and thank him for his correspondence. Do we need a motion? We don't need a motion, uh, but uh, clerk, you can note that and uh, we can send something on behalf of the board. Absolutely. Thank you. Yeah. Mr. Chair, um, so that, Chender? Go ahead. Who, who's that? Claudia Chender. Uh, Ms. Chender? Um, I'd like to make a motion, if this is the appropriate time. Certainly, yep. Uh, so um, I'll move my motion and then speak to it. Uh, I move that the committee write a letter to the Minister of Education and Early Childhood Development calling on him to guarantee that all licensed child care centers have adequate funding to avoid layoffs of early childhood educators and center closures. Um, we know uh, the clerk also has a copy of this motion, which she can maybe uh, forward yeah. to everyone at this I'm time. Um, I will do so. Thank you. Uh, we know that Nova Scotia went into this pandemic with a patchwork system. Um, you know, prior to the introduction of pre-primary, we have an early childhood education system that's characterized already by a shortage of spaces, relatively high fees. Um, and low wages for early childhood educators. Um, the pandemic has highlighted existing challenges related to the provision of childcare in Nova Scotia. We know that childcare is a service with multiple goals. So it has child development goals. Um, it certainly helps level the playing field. And it also helps parents uh, go to work or go to school um, because they know that their children are safe and cared for. Um, as we've discussed uh, in this committee before, um, women with young children have experienced the biggest total loss in working hours during this pandemic, and that trend shows no signs of reversal right now. Uh, the government uh, did step in and backstop user uh, parent fees um, for uh, three months, which I think um, you know many Nova Scotians were really grateful for. But the current uh, situation is that uh, daycares and regulated child care centers are allowed to have 50% capacity and the government is paying 50% of their fees. Because school aged children have no care at all and because many people have lost their jobs, uh, those child care centers are not yet at 50% capacity in almost every case. And therefore, we are starting to see a wave of layoffs um, and even some center closures. So this motion um, is to ask the minister to immediately address this issue. Uh, it's, al it's already been a problem in the past and it's going to form one of the biggest barriers um, to women being able to go back to work. Yeah, I think it's a great motion, but do we wanna, we'll leave it up to the floor to debate. Mr. Chair, uh, may who, who Suzanne Lonis Croft. Ms. Croft. Hi, um, I, I think um, certainly we can write a letter, but I think we need to be clear that this committee doesn't set government policy. So um, as a committee, we, we can certainly send a letter to the minister to look into this possibility, um, but just wanted to be clear that we do not set government policy here at the committee. It's Claudia Chender. The motion is not to set government policy, but to write a letter to the Minister of Education. Thank you. Okay, Ms. Chender, uh, is it possible for uh, after the vote of this that you could send that via email to the clerk and she could send it out to us? She has it and should have sent it to you already. We okay. have it. I got it. Um, yeah. Okay, sorry. I'm, I'm a little slow on my email, so I apologize. <laughs> no problem. Oh, there it is. Um, Okay, uh, any other discussion on this? Uh, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? The motion is carried. Uh, is there any other uh, business? Yes, Mr. Chair, Brad Johns. Huh? Yeah. Um, I don't, I, it's not really a point of order, but I do want to uh, highlight that uh, this is our second meeting 
where we have a vacant seat. Um, I note that that is a government seat here at the table. I'm, I really don't think that, given that there's, I believe, 26 members of the Liberal Caucus, I, I really don't know why that seat is uh, continues to be vacant during our, our committee meetings, and I'm, I'm hopeful that at our next meeting that that seat will uh, have somebody in it. So I would just make that point before we end. Thank you. Uh, certainly, yep. We can uh, we can definitely take that under consideration. Um, so, with that, is that sorry, the kids. Um, with that, is that the end of uh, or other business? Does anyone else have anything else they want to throw on the floor? Well, as usual, uh, it has been a pleasure to speak to all of you. I think this has gone smoothly. Um, our next meeting will be Tuesday, July 28th at 10 a.m. And that will bring this uh, meeting to order. So thank you, or to uh, close. Thank you very much and enjoy your week. Thank you, Mr. Thank you, Chair. Chair. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Judy. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. You're welcome, Suzanne. Thanks, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.